Hey, Swifties. Welcome to a brand new episode of Swifty School, where together we walk Clownilia Street covering the latest news and Easter eggs from our fearless leader, Taylor Swift. I'm your host, Reagan Bailey, and it is enchanting to have you here. Now that we're out of the woods, let's get into today's episode. It's another great day to be alive at the same time as Taylor Swift. Hello, hello, hello. I am in my pajamas. I hope you don't mind because it's been that kind of day. Now, before we get into today's episode, you guys know, as always, this is purely an expression of my thoughts and opinions and not affiliated with, although I wish it was, Taylor Swift or Taylor Nation. Now, we are diving deep into a different topic matter today, something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. You guys know I have a degree in marketing. Not really sure what that means, but I studied business in school. I have a deep appreciation for the PR side of everything that is the brand of T Swift, T Swizz, Mother Queen herself. And really that boils down to the real mastermind of all this, which is Tree Pain. So consider today your deep dive on all things publicist, PR, and marketing of Taylor Swift as I give you a comprehensive analysis of the past 10 years and who's responsible for it, which is dun dun dun. Who's afraid of tree pain? So without further ado, <laughs> let's get in to today's episode. Now, you guys know I was just in Charlotte and I had an absolute marvelous time. I had a marvelous time not ruining everything. Everything went so, so smoothly. I had my first meetup, if you guys are just joining or tuning in. It was my first launch party slash meetup. So I did a collection with Girl Tribe Company, which if you're familiar with them, they are both a boutique and a store in Charlotte. They've got a couple locations there. The cool thing about Girl Tribe and how I actually discovered them is that they did, I don't really know what they called it, some some sort of version of the Eras Tour. Basically what they did that was genius of them is during the US leg of the Eras Tour, they did a pop-up in every single city that Taylor's tour was in. So when Taylor was in LA, they were here doing a pop-up and they had tons of items that appealed to Swifties. So it was genius because it kind of gave people who were traveling into town like a fun little experience to go to a Taylor themed pop-up, a store that sold Taylor adjacent or inspired items. So it was genius. And that's how I connected with the team here in Los Angeles last August. My friend said, hey, you should check this out. I was like, what the heck's going on? Checked it out, met the owners, partnered with them on content. It was a great time. The pop-up itself was the most darling thing I've ever seen. And the rest is history. So anyways, I had a chance to visit their stores now. Let me pump the brakes there and mention that Charlotte is absolutely the cutest place that I've ever been. Like, absolutely chef's kiss. So precious, so cute. I'm obsessed with the whole city. South Park, South End, all of it was fabulous. The meetup was a dream. I'm so beyond grateful. There were some of you that drove three and a half hours to come say hi, shop the collection, all the things. So I'll leave it at that. You could head over to my Instagram to see a recap post and all the different things. And of course, if you are interested in checking out the collection, so many of you guys are live, laugh, loving for the long live purple crew neck and the but daddy I love him hat and tank top, which I kind of thought you guys would like those ones. If you're interested in checking that out, you can go to girltribeco.com and check out the rig mail collection. Now I'm headed to New York this week. Welcome to New York. It's been waiting for me. I'm super excited because I am going to a pride themed event with the brand Alice and Olivia. If you're familiar with them, I am obsessed with capital O with Alice and Olivia and I'm going to a pride themed pink pride rainbow themed situation. Paris Hilton will be there DJing. It's going to be a blast. That's on Thursday. If you're listening to this the day the episode comes out, then it's tomorrow. And I'm going to hang out in New York for a couple of days. And my mom's going to come up there, meet me. We're going to have a jolly old time. So by the time you're listening to this, I am touching down in the big old apple and quite literally clowning with you from Clownelia Street. Speaking of Clownelia Street, before I get into the episode, 65 updates for you. I am definitely going to Clownelia Street. I know since I was there last in September, I think they put up a new sign on Cornelia Street. I'm calling it Cornelia Street. On Cornelia Street, they put up a new sign and I think it says, I'll never walk Cornelia Street again. It, it looks like a street sign, but then it's like Taylor Swift lyrics. So I'm going to go make sure to join my broadcast channel on Instagram because of course, Electric Lady Studios are nearby, all the things. So I'll make sure to pop in. I might leave a couple little merch items or friendship bracelets laying around for a fellow Swifty. So make sure to be in my broadcast channel. 
Now, 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 let's talk about the woman of the hour, the woman of the day, the woman of the episode, Taylor's publicist, Tree Payne. Now, I'm going to hit you with a fun little fact. Her name is, in fact, not Tree. <laughs> that is a nickname. I believe it's a nickname, unless it's her middle name. According to the old Wikipedia, Tree Payne's first name is actually Trina, T-R-I-N-A. And I don't think I've ever met anybody named Trina before. So she goes by Tree. That's why people call her Tree, Tree Payne, all the things. Payne is her last name in case you haven't put that together. And I feel like her defining quality, if you will, from afar is her red hair. Now, I have a fun story about her red hair for you. So if you are new or need a little reminder, because I will never stop reminding you that I was invited to the Air Store premiere and attended that on October 11th, 2023, best day, hashtag ever. So when I was attending that and when basically it was at the Grove, the movie theater, there was gorgeous, gorgeous florals everywhere, red carpet, all the things. And when Taylor came out to get her photos taken, she was standing there in the blue flower Oscar de la Renta dress. Tree Payne was behind her, fluffing her dress, doing all the things. And basically the era's tour dancers and anybody who was like in the film was all lined up and they had been taking photos. So when Taylor came out, it was time to like kind of add her to the middle of the shot and get like group photos of everybody. And at this time, a lot of the photographers were like, hey, Taylor, can we do this? Or hey, Taylor, can we pose here? Or, can we stand here? Can we do that? And these were all photographers. These weren't like paparazzi. These were like clearly photographers that were like given a press pass to be at this event. So they weren't like heckling her. They were just trying to get her while they had her sort of thing. And I remember because I was so close, like literally so, so close to Taylor when this was all happening. Like, I can't even describe you. Like, I could throw a pebble and hit her. Like, not that I would, but you know what I mean? So while she's saying this, she turned and was like, I take direction from the red-haired lady. And ding, 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 she was talking about Tree Payne. Tree Payne was right there. And so basically, Tree Payne told the photographers what she wanted and what Taylor was envisioning for the images and all that. So really fun that I got to experience a little Tree Payne slash Taylor moment, IRL. <laughs> Loved that for me. I, I guess in the moment, I wasn't totally processing that that was tree i was just so entranced by the fact that i was like experiencing the same experience in the same moment as taylor and it was seriously so freaking fun but anyways back to sort of a little backstory on trina or tree pain obviously we know she's known for her bright red hair she has been taylor's publicist for a decade so this dates back to 2014 is when Tree Pan actually, I'll go back into her career, so don't worry, but she actually broke off and created her own PR firm. And at this point, she decided to sign Taylor as her only client to her PR firm. And really, it's been kind of the same for the past 10 years. So really cool that they've been together. But little known fact, because Tree Pan is really kind of a celebrity in the Swifty world, Taylor had a publicist for seven years consistently before that. And I have her name somewhere written down in my notes. I'll tell you at the end. She had a publicist before Tree, and that publicist was with Taylor for seven years before they resigned. And boy, do I feel like they're probably regretting their life decisions. <laughs> but maybe it wasn't a good fit. Who knows? All we know is that Tree has been around for 10 years, and I'll leave you with that. Now, if you follow the Tree lore, <laughs> it's funny to say Tree lore, the Tree lore at all, my best description for you is she's very present in that she attends a lot of the Air Store shows. She's photographed, you know, near and around or by Taylor at major events and she's always got boots on the ground and she's like a little elf that just like pops up a little fairy if you will but she also does a really great job as publicists do like kind of remaining behind the scenes but interestingly enough we have seen her kind of like pop out of the woodworks when things really hit the fan cough cough kanye situation more recently like the doom if you guys are aware of the doom instagram page that's kind of like a celebrity gossip page they were spreading a lot of rumors about joe and taylor's relationship and tree pain just had like enough and she absolutely lost it and made a statement and was like doom sucks like you know everything they say is false so she does come out occasionally and speak her truth which is awesome and we love that but she's kind of interesting because there is really so little information about this woman out there, yet she is known to be one of the most powerful, influential masterminds of this entire industry. You know what I mean? So really, really cool and interesting. Now, she is a California girl, woot woot, just like me. She grew up in Costa Mesa, California, and she attended the University of Southern California. Now, she obviously had a career prior to signing Taylor as her sole client in 2014, and her career started as an intern. So she started as an intern, as many do, for Mute Records. And one thing I found interesting when kind of like reading up or researching about her career and all that jazz is she kind of had like a, a golden invisible string, golden thread, <laughs> if you will, between like the music industry and PR and marketing. And it really feels like Taylor 
was the perfect marriage of both things that she had kind of been pursuing professionally for several years prior to engaging with Taylor and signing her on as a client. So like I mentioned, she started as an intern for Mute Records. No idea what Mute Record is. I'm assuming it's a, a record label. And after that, she worked as a national marketing manager. So again, she's still in the field of marketing. And it's for this time, it's for a company called World Domination Records. Following that, she transitioned to be an executive assistant at Maverick Records. So again, she's staying in the record music industry. And interestingly, Maverick Records, where she was an executive assistant, was actually the record label that was founded by Madonna. So this is one of the first introductions that we see where her career is like definitely starting to shift in the direction of being around A-listers. And in 1995, she then went on to join Interscope Records. And I wanted to throw out a question to you guys. I feel like we've talked about Interscope Records before, and I feel like I need to go back and listen to episode one of Swifty School because I'm pretty sure Interscope, didn't that come up in that episode somehow? I feel like I for sure have heard of this before, and maybe it's just like my world's colliding or something like that, but definitely send me in a note if you know anything about Interscope. So 1995, I was not even alive yet. Tree Payne joined Interscope Records, and at this point, she was kind of working on the side of marketing. So she was focusing on West Coast marketing and artist development as a representative. Kind of interesting because right here we see sort of the shift into like that PR mindset, but there's also still that marketing aspect of the job that she was doing. And at this time, while working in the mid-90s at Interscope Records, she worked with a lot of A-listers. So she was working with people like No Doubt, Snoop Dogg, if you're familiar with the band Nine Inch Nails. So like I said, working with A-listers well before she ever got her fingers in the world of the Taylor Swiftum. Now, she ended up leaving Interscope and she started her own marketing company. So again, we see that shift in the marketing. And this is interesting because she started a marketing company and it isn't until later on that she actually starts her PR firm because she ends up leaving her own marketing company. I'm not sure. It was really unclear to me because there is so little information. So I guess I won't say with certainty that she left her own marketing company. But if you do fast forward in her career, she did work somewhere else after that. She worked at William Morris Agency, which is located here in Beverly Hills. So I'm not quite sure it's unclear to me if she was juggling her marketing company and then took on another job alongside that. If she sold it, I'm not really sure. To me, it kind of seemed like she left her marketing company. But regardless, small piece of the story, all of this to say, she ended up moving on from her job at this agency, and she became the vice chairman of ACM in 2002. And ACM is the Academy of Country Music. I feel like this point in the early 2000s is when her career really starts lining up perfectly to end up meeting Taylor and becoming her publicist. Taking you from her position in 2002 with the Academy Country of Music, in 2007, she joined Warner Music Nashville. So again, tons of just music influence. She's really staying in sort of the lane of working in the music industry, but as a PR and marketing professional. And her position here is definitely where she kind of takes a jump into more like C-level, A-level, I don't know what corporate jargon is, but she's the VP for publicity. And at this point, I feel like 2007, it's seven years before she signs on Taylor. These next seven years seem to be kind of pivotal in her career because in 2013, she was promoted to senior vice president of publicity. This is a very senior position, obviously, and it's interesting that one year, this is 2013 that she was promoted to senior vice president of publicity, one year later is when she ended up leaving to start her own PR firm, which is still the PR firm that she operates under today, called Premium PR, and Taylor Swift has been, since the beginning, her sole client. Now, like I mentioned before, it must have been serendipitous timing, however they met or were introduced to one another because Taylor's publicist of seven years had resigned and her name was Paula Erickson. Tried to do some research on Paula and I was not entirely sure which Paula I was finding and didn't want to give you guys misinformation. It seems like it was kind of irrelevant to the storyline, so I decided to just focus on our girl, Tree. We love you, Tree. Now, when I tell you, limited information out there, folks. <laughs> on tree. That's kind of all I could find. But I think the interesting theme that I'm taking away is she really hustled. I mean, you're talking like a span of 20 years of building her career before she signed on with Taylor. But one thing I would love to see explored further, you know, later down the road, I, I mean, I think a book from tree would be incredible whenever she retires or moves on down the road. I think I would love to just hear what is that collaborative process between Taylor and Tree? You know, how much push and pull is there? Does Taylor lean on Tree to sort of, you know, drive the ship? Does Taylor, you know, drive the ship? I'm not sure. I think it's a really interesting job and I am unclear 
you know, what is the nuance of the job of a publicist of an A-lister to this magnitude? You know, I think Tree Shirley has a team of people that work for her, I assume, I presume, I'm not sure. I mean, Shirley, 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 there's a whole slew of people. Would people that work on like Easter eggs work under Tree? Like who, what would her team be composed of? I have so many questions and I would be curious if any of you guys are publicists. Maybe send me a note. Maybe we could have you on the podcast to help answer some questions or clarify if that's of interest to you guys. But one thing I do know for certain is that the cool part about Tree is that she defends Taylor to no end. And while there's been very few times where she's spoken out publicly, I mean, I'm telling you, this woman does not have social media. All her accounts are private. She refuses to give interviews, but she does make public statements from time to time. And every single time she does, she is full throttle, if you will, for Taylor, which we absolutely love. And she quite literally gets paid probably a very, 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 very pretty, pretty penny for. (laughs) How much do you think a publicist for Taylor Swift gets paid? I would say in the millions, right? At least a million a year, like minimum. I mean, I'm assuming... I do think she's married. I saw that she did get married at some point. I think her and her husband are still together. But the fact that so much of your life has to be, I mean, anything could go wrong at any given moment, right? Like a story could break that super bad look for Taylor and Shree has to be available, right, to jump on that and come out with a statement or guide Taylor in whatever is necessary. So I'm sure it is like the coolest job in the world, but also the most exhausting and the most anxiety ridden and then here's the thing is like no human's perfect right like obviously pr professional working for at this magnitude obviously knows their stuff but like the weight that tree must carry in like providing the guidance to make a statement about something she's giving her best judgment but that still might not sway the media or move the needle in certain direction that they were hoping and so i think that part of the job is probably extremely difficult and then also the fact that like maintaining your privacy too while having such an overbearing fan base that's really invested in every aspect of Taylor's career, including your publicist. You know, that must feel really strange for someone who is like spotlight adjacent. I just have so many questions. And while I know she doesn't do interviews, I'd be remiss if if, if you're out there, Tree, would love to have you. (laughs) <laughs> in all of the free time that you have. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about Tree. I wanted to shift and just kind of talk about some of the updates. I know I usually start the show with the updates. I figured I'd give them to you now because we've got a couple exciting things coming up. Now, womp, womp, womp. What the heck happened with 6-7? Honestly, that was rude, Taylor. And my only thought now is twofold. Something could happen at the 100th show on 6 Or perhaps the glitch was that we needed to flip 6-7 and look at the date of 7-6 for whenever the international shows are happening. Perhaps the dates that go along with this theory with the counting are flipped because that's how they write the date in these countries. I have no idea. That's all I've got for you. So perhaps 7-6, perhaps the 100th show happening on Thursday, June 13th. Regardless, she's going to be in Liverpool. I'm assuming Travis will be there because if you remember when Travis was doing those Zoom interviews and all that jazz, he had said he was really excited for the London shows. So I'm assuming that meant he was going to be there. He hasn't been able to attend quite a few of the most recent shows, so I'm hoping that he'll be able to be at that one for Taylor's sake. I'm also hoping for Taylor's sake that it's not like 10 degrees because from a lot of the videos I'm seeing, it appeared to be absolutely freezing at the last couple of shows leading up to this 100th show. Obviously, we saw the introduction of her wearing those black gloves, most likely for the reason of her hands were quite literally cramping up into like little balls because she was so cold. Now, following the Liverpool shows, we've got one random Tuesday show, and that is in Cardiff. Am I saying that right? I never say any of these places right. Tuesday is in Cardiff, and then that's where we head into so, so long, 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 long. How's that? (laughs) And then Dublin, 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 Dublin. I think it's Dublin. We're going with Dublin. Oh, me, oh, my. What a blessing it is for you guys to hear me butcher all of these poor, poor cities. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm all over the place today. We had new merch added to the website. We had new CDs added to the website. My question to you guys is, is anybody surprised? Because I'm not. This woman loves a bonus track, an acoustic version, a 900th edition of the CD, and more power to her. You know, our capitalist queen, we love that for her. But a lot of people are calling out a pattern with her emojis on Instagram. Now, I'm going to be so completely honest with you guys. 
I go hard for a good like math situation when it comes to like calculating dates, crunching numbers. But when it comes to like analyzing the ellipsis or the emoji pattern that Taylor uses on her Instagram posts, that doesn't butter my bread. You know what I mean? It doesn't tickle my fancy as much as the mathematic equations do. So I leave that up to other people. And basically what I've gathered is that some people are clowning for 613 because of the way Taylor has been like ending the last few thank you posts. She's been like adding the soon emoji or the dot dot dot. And people are saying she did the same thing around the time of the 1989 announcement or the torture post announcement. So we'll see. I feel like I've run out of clown makeup for the next couple of weeks, so I'm kind of just along for the ride. You know what I mean? Now, I want to switch gears and get into some of the submissions for today. And if you're just joining or you're new, hi, we do Swifty submissions at the end of every episode, and you can find the form to send in submissions for Easter eggs, theories, topic requests, all that jazz in the description of this episode or on my Instagram at Swifty School Podcast. Now, we have a couple of shout outs for new Patreon members, Sergio and Becca. Welcome to the Patreon. So glad that you guys were able to join. Now, there are many more members that joined, but a perk of some of the the different tiers of membership over on my Patreon is that you get a shout out here on the episode or over on my Instagram. So Sergio and Becca just so happened to join the tiers where they got shout outs here. So woot, woot, woot. Thank you so much for joining. And if you guys are interested in joining my Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Swifty School. Now let's get into the submissions. First up, we have Ava G. And for Ava G's Swifty submissions, she said, for the openers in London on 621, 22, and 23, Taylor did what she did before with having symbols and shapes represent each opener. For these dates, Mehdi is a heart, Griff is a star, and Benson Boone is a typewriter. Out of the three, the typewriter is the most detailed, and we know that that meaning is involved with Torture Post Department. Could Taylor do something on the night with Benson Boone or announce something? I'm hoping she does something with Benson being a Benson Boone fan. First of all, I need to backtrack. How on earth do you pronounce M-E-T-T-E? Mehdi? Met? Metty? <laughs> I don't know who that artist is, but I do know about Griff and I do know about Benson Boone and I too am a Benson Boone fan. Now here's the thing. I feel like we haven't talked about this enough because I am a little befuddled. I feel like we glazed over the fact that she randomly added in new openers on top of Paramore just for select London shows. It seems random and out of place to me, and I totally agree with you. I think there could be a little bit of clowning to do there, but I do kind of want to see how the 100th show and a couple of the shows after that pan out before we dive too deep into clowning about this. My only thought and question is, like, is she going to have add-on openers for other portions of the tour or just London? Like, was she just feeling like London needed a little extra something-something? She needed to zest things up? I'm not totally sure. But I am very interested in your theory, Ava. And something Torture Poets with Benson would be a total bop and a half. So I'm totally here for it. This next one's from Pablo S. And Pablo S. said, I think there's been a glitch. So we've changed to Europe where dates are written like day slash month slash year. So maybe the theory of 6789 is just referring to July 6th. Okay, yes, this is what I was saying earlier. And September 8th, giving... Also, TTPD, more time to shine, and by the time she returns to America, the dates restore, like in a glitch, to 10-11 and 12-13. I really, really like this theory, and I think I like it because it still aligns with my counting, and it isn't totally crazy, and it seems kind of manageable and doable with the timeline. I think I agree with you. Something being announced on 7-6, so let me think through this. 7-6 would be July 6th. Something announced July 6th and released 8-9. That would still put them basically a month apart from the time of announcement and release, which is enough time to ramp up excitement, I think, especially being that she has like 1 million shows on the Eras tour in between that time. So she could definitely like hype it up or talk about it or give more details or release like variants or something during that time period. And then it would kind of revert back to everything as planned with the 10, 11, and 12, 13. I like this. I think I'm going to ride this clown wave. I like it. I want to know what you guys think. Is the 7, 6 theory, does it have legs? Are we being crazy? What do you think? Now, in terms of things that are coming up, I am super excited because next week is my birthday. <laughs> super excited. I'm turning 28, which is a little hashtag scary, but it's fine. I am not sure yet what I'm doing for my birthday. I know I'm going to the Noah Khan concert, so that's kind of the only thing on the agenda for right now, and I'm really jazzed about that. But 
following my birthday on Sunday the 23rd, we do have an upcoming clown call. And I truly, in my heart of hearts, am obsessed with these clown calls. I think you guys are just as obsessed with them as I am. I am so glad so many of you guys have been able to join. But if you are free on Sunday the 23rd, have been a little hesitant, a little scared to join a clown call, I highly encourage you to do it. We had so much fun on the last one. It was pride themed. So we all dressed in our best you need to calm down rainbow colorful outfits and we clowned so hard we were literally knee deep in so many different theories we were like screaming in the microphone we were researching things crunching numbers calculating things it, it was a total blast so if that's of interest to you like i mentioned before you can head over to my patreon all you have to do is sign up for the senior or sorority tier in order to join the clown calls and once you join all the information will populate or if you can't find it just send one of us a message and we will make sure to get back to you with all the info I do have a couple of giveaways coming up as well. So make sure to head over my Instagram, Reagan Bailey, for that. And as always, make sure to join my broadcast channel for more clowning. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed learning about our wonderful goddess publicist of the year, Tree Pain. So excited to talk about something a little different today, right? I don't know. Let me know if there's anybody else in the Swiftum that you would like me to do a deep dive on. One that I get a lot is Taylor Swift's brother. But when I tell you there is zero information about Taylor Swift's brother out there, <laughs> even less than Tree Pain. So I don't know how eventful that episode would be, but I could try if you really want me to. Anyways, thank you guys so much. As always, make sure to rate, review, and share this episode with a friend if you enjoyed it. And also, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, subscribe to my YouTube because I might be doing a giveaway there <laughs> very soon. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I will see you on the next one. To today's episode. I know all too well how busy life can be, and I am so grateful that you chose to stay, stay, stay. Now, just know this is me trying, and I would greatly appreciate if you took a minute to leave a review or maybe share this episode with a fellow Swifty. Make sure you join my broadcast channel on Instagram for more Swiftivities. And long story short, this love is real, and I'm beyond grateful for your support. See you next time.